Hey up everybody and welcome back. Right, well, first thing is, thank you for all the commiserations about the Newkey Brown. Um, most of you seem to be of the same opinion of me. You know, why call it Newcastle Brown when you've changed the recipe? But anyway, can't be helped, so we will move on. Which means part two, as you saw, of the hubs. So we'll finish off the front one today uh, what we're going to do is continue with the idea of working from this end. So what I'm going to do first is make the sleeve to fit in here. And as you see, this fork is, um, is a solid end and this one is a bolt up end. So we're going to make a sleeve to get the diameter of the wheel spindle right for the hole in the fork. And it's going to be another one of those top hats. We're going to make it about the same. Well, We'll make it exactly the same size as this part of the fork here, which is round. Now, on the original hub, the way the wheel spindle was, there was a nut which tightened up on the spindle and held the brake plate on. But we're just going to have it so that the brake plate is going to be pressed against the fork there. And that will carry all our, uh, our pressure through on that centre race again. So we're going to put it there. So I'd say, first of all, I'll make this top hat. So I want it to be, well, I don't know, I'll measure it about a quarter inch. Then when we've got that in there, we'll come round to this end. And just the same as I didn't bother trying to make this to length, the sleeve to go on here, I'm going to make a little bit longer. When we've got everything sorted, so it's nicely seated in there and tightened up so it's all working properly, I'll cut this at a suitable length, we'll drill through it so we take like a Tommy bar and then what happens is when we tighten this nut up here, holding it with a Tommy bar, that will get all our, our pressure on the, the bearings and then we can tighten this end cap up and it's done and in place. So, um, one of you mentioned, um, you noticed that as I spun this, the uh, actual spoke mounting was a little out. I've worked on this one, which is a bit flexible, and funnily enough, when I measured this, the rim that they put the spoke holes in isn't even mounted squarely on the brake drum. Uh, as you go around and sort of measure from the spoke part to the edge of the drum, it changes from one side to the other, so they didn't even make it properly. But that will be taken up when the wheel's built, because the truing of the wheel, of course, is going to make the rim true to the spindle so everything will be right even if this is slightly out and the brake drum is fine the brake drum is square to the spindle so we won't actually have any problem with the way the brake shoes seat on the inside of the drum so let me get this thing turned up and then we can look at this end draining again all right there's our piece to go in here i've made this side out of alloy to match the fork leg the other side's going to be steel so, I've made this a nice uh, tight fit. Come on, get on there, stop prattin' about. that's just nicely come to there so I bronzed uh, that little bit on there so we don't have to mess around with that Now, let me go around the other side. Now you see, you thought I'd made it wrong for a minute, didn't you? Now 
there we go. And there's our little three quarter thing. You can always take that out and take a little bit more off. So there's our three quarters from the fork leg to there. Is that to the inside? Yep, three quarters to the inside. Three quarters to the inside. So, hub's nice and centered in the forks. We've got just a smidgen here to put in, which is just the way I wanted it. And uh, there we go. You can see that running out. Amazing. So, now we're going to make a sleeve for this side. And as I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it to come out to about here so that I can drill it, put a Tommy bar in. Then, see, we'll put the washer and the nut on there, hold it, and when we've got this all tightened up, we won't be pulling the forks in because it can move in this one, and then we'll tighten that clamp up. And that's that. So let me just go and turn this because this is literally no more than a tube, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I think we're all set. There's the piece that's going to go in here. And as you can see, it's let in a little bit to go in there. So, what's going to happen is when we're all set, I'm going to weld this on the end of here. So for now, we'll just have it loose. See if everything still goes together. Goes in there. Should come out the other side. Now what we'll do, right, is, or well what would normally happen is we'd put our washer and our nut on and as I say what I'm going to do is cut this about there now that I know where it needs to be that's up against that that's up against that we hold this when we tighten this nut it'll pull everything together see the wheel spinning on its bearings now then when we tight we tighten this up to clamp on there so, I'll cut that off with about half an inch sticking out, weld it in, drill a hole through for our Tommy bar, and then uh, that's it. But it is five minutes to five, and uh, I think it's about time I have another cup of tea. So anyway. That is the front hub done. Get a bit of welding and we'll go on to the rear hub. Now I've done the last couple of things to finish this front end off. I welded that piece onto there and then uh, tidied the end up so it doesn't look as if it's welded on. And the other thing I did is I had to have obviously a torque arm of some sort for the brake plate. So I made this aluminium one up it's bolted in from here so it's out of the way of the, uh, the brake shoes because the, the bolt heads are down in that depression and it, uh, it bolts into there so let me put all this together so that goes in there like thus Now then. Put that on. We'll put our nut on. Put our bar in this end. Now I'm not going to tighten it up completely because I've got to put uh, where's it? the bolt in 
for this here. So oh, I've made that space a fractionally tight. Mm. There's a little spacing piece that goes in here. So I'll thin that off, but in the interim I'll show you that uh, Right. There we go. So that's going to screw in there like that. And now that that's tightened up, I can tighten these two and uh, we're all set. That thing looks terrible. It looks so bad that I've checked it twice. I've put the spindle through um, with a square. I've checked that this is all square to the spindle and it is. The, the brake drum is square to the spindle so any other bits and pieces will have to be taken out with the spokes. But anyway that's that all in. So now we can move to the rear hub. This is everything we're going to need to do the rear hub. The, uh, the centre here is one and three quarters and our steel is one and three quarters so we don't even have to turn this one down it's just got to be bored out and we've got to put shoulders on. So this which is the steel we're going to use for the new wheel spindle is three quarter inch and the bearing is five eighths so that will give us a a nice uh, little lip to press against that new bearings and our piece of tube to make these out of so that's the first thing I'm going to do what I'm going to do is this is I'll measure it exactly but this is basically five eighths I'm going to cut eight pieces of that which we'll put in we'll put the sprocket on we'll put the bolts in and uh, Actually, I've got stainless steel bolts in at the moment because I use basically all stainless steel fasteners. But, as I found to my cost, stainless steel, if it gets hot, really galls. So a couple of times when I've been, like here, welding these, these in, I've, you know, bolted the thing up to hold everything in place. You weld it and then you cannot get the stainless steel uh, bolt back out. Um, let's see, I learned it by my cost by having to drill them out and sort of basically ruin the job I'd just done. So I'm going to put the old bolts in, which are ordinary mild steel, put the sprocket on to hold everything in place, all these little tubes in place and then we'll bronze them. So I'm going to do that first so that I have the sprocket on nice and tight to get things lined up in the swinging arm. So there's our eight spaces, it worked out at uh 0 0.608 for each one so let me get those bolted under the sprocket and then we'll bronze them on now I've got these bronzed on in place but I've run out of argon so can you still see that what we're going to do is press on and uh, get the all the measurements and everything to put the extension piece in the center. So let me just bolt this on here like that and then we'll go over to the frame. Now I'll put the bearings back in this hook, put the brake plate on and I've got it pulled right up against the stop or right up as far as it'll go and I've measured from the rod I've used here up to the center of the swinging arm so I know this is in square these two plates that we're going to be cutting are parallel so it doesn't matter where it is it's not going to alter, uh, alter the, the width across there. So I put a rod in here which is as near as damn it straight clamped to the outside of this sprocket and the outside of this sprocket is touching. Now the sprocket on the gearbox is a little wider than this one that's probably for a 530 this looks like a 428 chain. But I'm not worried about that little bit because we're going to 
leave ourselves some space at both sides just to have a little spacer so that we can set that up exact later on so right now we've got oh quarter inch here which is just nice so for this side we're not going to put the speedo drive back on i.e. that thing what I'll do is I'll make a little cap for it so again it's only going to be made out of something like 16th so this is more or less the edge that we're going to go to so that is two and seven eighths so we'll give ourselves a quarter inch there again to take up little things like that cap and a spacer here that's going to be two and five eighths so we're going to extend this one by two and five eighths let me write that down extension two and five eighths inches now this here is one and three quarter inch diameter which is the same diameter as the steel I bought so unlike the front hub I don't have to turn it down so all I've got to do now is make my piece to go in here and exactly the same as we did in the front hub I'm going to cut that then make a stepped piece so that there'll be two and five eighths actually there and then about another half inch which will fit inside of that to keep it all really square and concentric with the spindle when we put it back together so let me go and put our mark on here as you remember pop it a couple of times so I keep the the spokes right and then I'll uh, I'll cut that out and we're in business and I won't forget about the width of the the cutting tool so there's the extension piece finished so I'll press it into there and pop that on the top then we'll make this the spindle now as you saw this spindle has a set amount in the center for the two bearings to press up against it doesn't have that tube so we're just going to duplicate this so what I'm going to do is measure that and then get an exact measurement on this extension and that will be the distance apart that the bearings should be now because that's how far apart they are in the standard hub the hub's been extended by that much so that needs to be added into there so I'll press this together um, press together will be fine for now let's say I've run out of argon so when I've got some argon I'll weld it up and we'll be done with that and uh, we will make our measurements and then do the turning on the wheel spindle I'm back I just had a thought um, mention this to you I don't know if you can see it there showing up but it suddenly struck me because I was going on uh, Charlie's instructions about marking the two halves I put a line down that as well I thought rather than just trying to eyeball the two ends and the markings on that I don't know if you can see it there it is anyway I just thought it would be easier if I put a line down there so that when I press that on I've got something to aim at all right there's the extended hub back in lined up with where we're going to want our sprocket and once more we're just going to work from one end I'm not going to try and make it exactly the right length this is uh, eight inches in between more or less so it's about eight and a half inches and then the width of a nut but we'll start at one end we won't worry about that end and when we've got it made and in there we can just mark and cut the other end off so I have measured the thickness of the bearing and from here to the bearing is where are we three quarters of an inch actually possibly it's only uh, no it's not three quarters it is eleven sixteenths okay 
So we've got 11 16 then we've got the thickness of the bearing and that will be the first edge and we know how long this is going to be because I've added those two lengths together. So let me get the uh, spindle in to the lathe and we'll do the first end because what we've got to do here is turn it down to the size for the ID of the bearing. Then we'll go that necessary length and then we'll turn that piece down and then we'll put it in, put it in here and we can cut it to length. There's the extended wheel spindle. You see the shoulder there, shoulder there, so that's those shoulders are now further apart. There's our bearing uh, surface for the, the bearings to go on. They'll be tight when they're on there. So let me put this in the hub and then we'll go and put it in the swinging arm. This end should be right and then we can mark that and cut it off and then we'll do some threads on the end. Just to please Steam Shop Dave. Now then, there's the new wheel spindle in and just in case you're wondering I'm using the old bearings because I keep knocking them in and out. So you can see we've just nicely got enough here that's uh, We've got to put the chain adjuster things on and we've got to have a nut and a washer so that'll be just nice there so that's as much as we want it to stick out on the other side as well so we'll measure that to match here mark this side and then cut that off and then thread those two ends now I just noticed looking through the viewfinder if any of you are thinking this is miles off the sprocket it's the wide angled lens, oops, making that curve because as it comes towards you, you get the distortion of a wide angle lens. So it's actually dead straight and running parallel with that sprocket. So don't worry about that. And while I've got you on that, because I'm going to go for my lunch in a minute, let me move you around this fraction. Now I know some of you are probably still worried about this front hook. So let me just say that I set this up, I think I mentioned this earlier, or last week or something, but I set this up with a dial indicator and the run out from the wheel spindle to the inside where the brake shoes are going to be of the drum was about 2,000. But knowing what you're all like, this and this of course are actually welded on. So I set two and worked these, so there, I'm happy with that. As I mentioned, actually, if you measure from there to there, it varies. They didn't even put this collar on straight. So I've straightened everything up. That's negligible. You know, I've got a nasty feeling I've already told you this. If I have, sorry. You know, a couple of days later, my memory's not where it should be. But anyway, I'm happy with that. So let me go on and my lunch, and then we'll do some threading. Right, as I say... Steam Shop was most put out that when I did the front wheel spindle one minute it was like that and then the next minute it had a thread on. So I think he just wants to see me make a mess of it. So anyway we're going to put this 5 8 18 which is the fine thread on this end. Um, actually I think I went a little bit far up there because it's going to mean the chain tensioner thing is running on the threads but it doesn't really matter. But anyway this one is marked the same, that would be the edge of the swinging arm plate, so I'll take it just a little bit less than that. So I've got you pulled right back so that you can see the, um, the activity of threading. Now, I've said before, this isn't the machining channel, but uh, we'll show you this. So are you watching Steam Shop? You might learn something. Right, there it is. So as I say, we're going to have a slightly less distance. I keep doing that. I've got it in neutral so I can spin it. And then I forget to put it back into, uh, into gear. Alright, now we'll try again. I think that will do. 
let's check it with the nut which I just put down you were all watching me where did I put it just unscrewed it that must be it so there we go get nut and the washer and a little bit sticking out all right so what we're going to do is we have our threading tool in we're going to take it up to the job there we go just making a little mark so we're going to set the cross slide to zero and we're going to set the compound to zero now funnily enough today's Saturday yesterday we had our little group meeting so we were all looking at stuff and Dick who's one of my friends who's been a machinist all his life ran his own machine business just retired said he never uses the compound the yeah the compound he always just uses the cross slide but I move it in with the compound that's the way actually I saw I a boot doing it so that's the way I do it so safety glasses there they are so I've got this set at 120 rpm it's an even number so on the thread and dial we can start on any mark whatsoever let me just check if it's still set up for 18 on here that is C no, that's it okay Here it goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the half nut on the thread so it moves. When it gets to the line, we'll disengage the half nut and we'll pull this back on the cross slide. So you're right. Then we'll bring it back. We'll take the cross slide to zero and then we're going to move in on the compound. Now first of all though, we'll just check that came out at 18, which it should do because I just did the other one. But see if we've made a mistake then we haven't cut into it so we can, uh, we can make adjustments. So that's fine. So as I said, we've moved in on our compound, cross slides back to zero. Now you would go in by little increments and then you know you can measure the thread depth, there's special uh, micrometers for measuring thread depth so you can get little wires that go in, all that's machining type stuff. We're doing the second one on the other end and I know that to get that end a nice fit I went in 45 on this. So we'll go to 40 and then we'll check it. Uh, with the nut. So let's get going. So start it up. Watch for a thing to come round. In. Out and back. In. Off and out. Back. I'll do one more and then I'll switch you off. And I'll just finish off. So we're back to zero on that one. We're forward on that one. Watch our threading dial. Just missed the number. in out so let me switch you off now I actually picked up the wrong nut not that it bothers the threads but I needed to make it a little bit wider so I've done that 
Right, we're up to 40. And that'll start, but it's tight. It's very tight, in fact. So, we're taking it to 45 thou. Zero here. I forgot to mention a little bit of lubricant now. I'm going to cut an oil. Okay, let's see what that's like. Come on, you little brood. Actually, I forgot to put a chamfer on that before I started it. <laughs> Look at that. See, steam shop, the other one went on perfectly. Oh, cool. Clean that up with a wire brush to just deburr the edges a little bit, but that looks like a nice, well, no, I think it'll, let me sham for the end. In fact, truth, look, show you, I'm not going to do anything untoward here. There's the file. easy to do like this when the camera's there. You are right if I was left handed. Okay, there's that. There's that. Maybe another foul. Ooh. Yeah, we'll just put that in. Actually, it might even just be a spring cut, but we'll put a we'll put one thou on. Take that back to zero. See, this is why I don't do machining. It's boring. It's got to be done, but it's boring. <laughs> God's steam shop. The other one was perfect. Oh, there we go. That's nice. It's slippy because it's got the cutting oil on it. Ow! Be careful of your cutting tools. Of course, I'm doing this cack handed, as I say, because of the. Uh... So there we are. No wobble in it. Nice thread. So let's put this uh, spindle in the hub and go and uh, put it in and see about our little spaces. So there it is, all in. It turned out there's an extra little boss on here and when I got it all lined up I didn't need a spacer in this side. 
so there's just one in this side I've just popped a couple of little bits in to take up where the uh, the chain adjusters will go so that's in uh, stay still look. so we're alright with that so I've got these to bronze in I've got that welding to do but that's that done so I'll get that finished and I'm going to send them off for spokes. Now a couple of people like Shed Built Dave mentioned places for me to get spokes but fortunately I have a place in the US over in California called Buchanan's uh, who are like family business been on the go for ages. You know deja vu I'm sure I've told you this anyway they're the only people I've ever got spokes from that actually bend the ends right so I'm gonna take send the hubs off to them tell them what the offs oh we have to measure the offset. I don't have time to do it this week. Um, so next week, we'll do the swinging arm. We'll do the the headstock bearings, and we'll calculate where the centre of this is to see if this is going to be like the front one, just uh, spoked up and trued on the centre of the hub, or whether we've got to have it over a little bit to take the the brake drum into account. So anyway, that's it for now. So until next week, go off and enjoy yourselves.